there, it's Sunday morning and I just released the video on making this thing right here and kind of as a bonus I made this thing down here as well which is something I've been meaning to do as I said in the video and I got around to doing it and you know the way I was using this before I just clamp it down to the workbench and I'd hold the part in place. I didn't really notice that it wasn't sticky, as sticky as I would hope. And so therefore, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get some, some of that stuff you put in toolboxes, you know, the rubbery stuff and, and either use that there. Or another way is to use a towel. And I actually tried this. I've used this in the past as well for sanding pads and the benefit is that it collects dust. So you spread that out on your thing, you do your sanding, and of course your air cleaner on, and your mask on, and all that stuff. But afterwards, you take this outdoors and you shake it out, and a lot of dust comes out of this because a lot of dust collects in it. Because when you're sanding something, you're going off the, the edge of it, and that dust is falling down on the surface. And in this case, it'll be falling down in the towel, and you can bring it outdoors and shake it out and get rid of it. It's excellent and it does improve the grip but not uh, perfectly but then what's perfect in this world right even okay say if I got some carpet pad maybe that would be better maybe that would be the best you know the quarter inch carpet pad the real rubbery stuff that would be great to put on here so I'll try to get a piece and then I'll just spray glue it right on top of this and this over here well this wasn't like this worked perfectly better than I anticipated actually that it really holds the sandpaper so it doesn't pop out even though I left a little bit too much space especially on the sides here when I made this if I you know I can probably put some veneer in here and glue it on right and and narrow that gap a little bit but it's working fine right now when I made this I had this other thing here in the back of my mind and I figured if I put sticky stuff or not sticky, non-slip stuff on the bottom of this, and then the non-slip stickiness of this, they'd work together and I wouldn't have to worry about it. I could just, I could use this with this. And otherwise I could use it right on the workbench, right? And not worried about it. And it does stick better to the foam when you put it down. And it is certainly usable because you're not, okay, you're not doing thousands of parts on this. Well, you can, but... You know, if you put it there, you do a little bit of sanding, and then you get rid of it. But I came up with a better idea. Now, in the video, in the description, I gave a couple of options. One of those was a towel for this foam thing. Also, another one was a cleat. Add a cleat to the bottom of this, so it clamps in my vise. But then when you do that, you can't use it here. Because it's not flat on the bottom. And it would be really... Okay, you're set up for sanding operations. It would be really handy to have that ability to just drop it in. So I came up with another idea and it uses the bench dogs that are in my workbench. And I got small squares of double-sided tape on the top of the two dogs that pop up and I want to lock into this. And that way I'll be able to push on those and get them to stick to the bottom of the sanding pad and then carefully lift them up and they'll stay attached to the sanding pad. And then I can mark around them and drill out those holes and then line it up on my workbench and just push those dogs up. It moves a little bit while you're using it, just a very small amount. That's not a big deal. The main thing is that it's held in place and it won't move. And then when I'm done with it, I can lift it off, push the dogs back down. And, you know, it's, it's flat on the bottom, so I can use it on this as well. Have you heard of Torrified Wood, friends? Well, I was experimenting with trying to make my own in my kitchen oven. You know, while you're cooking something else, you, you put a piece of wood in there. <laughs> you roast it along with the uh, roast beef. And it smells good, you know? It's, uh, okay, it's like wood smoke, right? So, like I said, I did some experimenting with smaller pieces. Um, these four pieces. This one's ash, white ash. And this is the color it went. And I'm not sure if it reached the full point of torification. Torification is where like it, it closes all the cells on the inside. So the water is basically almost waterproof and it doesn't 
absorb moisture um, so therefore it is very stable like it does it's not uh, it's not prone to seasonal expansion and contraction and I'm not sure if I if I reached it I guess the way to test would be to cut this sample in half like I've got four of them here cut them in half so like soak one half in water for a couple hours or so and then to see if there's any difference in the size like measure it beforehand and also have the piece to compare it to afterwards so ash and the way i did it was i wrapped them in tinfoil because it has to be in in the absence of oxygen for it to work properly like it can't burn it has to just like do a, a conversion you know so there has can't be any oxygen so i tightly wrapped it in heavy duty tinfoil Ash, like I said, this one here is uh, maple, I think. Yeah, maple. You can, like, you know what maple starts out as. This almost looks like cherry. That's been, you know, in the sun for quite a bit. So, maple, nice and dark. This is actually cherry. And you can see what cherry starts as. A little bit, you know, darker than maple, but look how nice and rich that looks. That almost looks like either sapili or walnut almost okay and this actually is walnut and i'm not happy with the way this turned out actually it kind of looks like it, it kind of made it look a little bit greenish now part of that might be because this is steamed walnut and what they do when they steam walnut is that okay it's, it drains some of the color well it doesn't drain it transfers some of the color from the heartwood which is dark to the sapwood, which is very light, especially in walnut. There's quite a contrast there and it kind of evens it out so that you get darker colored sapwood and you actually get darker colored heartwood as well, but it changes the color slightly from the natural walnut color. And I don't know if this process brought it out, but in any case, it didn't make the walnut any darker, but it did make it slightly greenish in color so i don't know i do <laughs> i do like the ash though that really came out nice and i do like the cherry and i do like the, the maple i like all three of these these are awesome okay so i was thinking about because i need i need quite a bit of it because i want to possibly make a pair of speakers from it and that'd be perfect because it'd be solid wood that is absolutely stable and won't expand and contract which would be great for which is what you need for speakers because you put a metal speaker inside a, a wooden frame, then you need to make allowances for expansion and contraction. It's not impossible, but it's more difficult. So it would be interesting to be able to make enough in my kitchen oven to uh, over the winter, you know, <laughs> over the winter to make a pair of speakers.